Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, Cameron Say here again, and um, pleasure to be with you as always. Uh, we're going to move along with Master the Mainframe um, Part 2, Challenge 7. I um, hope by now, if you've worked up to this point, you should have a, uh, a level of comfortability with um, the environment, uh, getting on the system, um, moving around through data sets, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if you um, are somewhat still uncomfortable, um, I recommend that you use some of the tools that they have. Uh, for example, um, um, they have um, excellent tools here. Um, let me see if I can find what they have. Um, yeah, so they have references, um, um, a reference section here on the master mainframe slide. That's mtm2017.myblumix.net. Um, you can see it in the, in, the, in the browser on the screen. And, um, you know, you, you go to um, the reference section. So there's a wealth of uh, information here. Uh, for example, um, wait a minute. Go over here, okay. Go, oh man. I think I, you think I've been in this game long enough to know how to use a mouse. Um, ISPF editor, uh, command summary. So yeah, that'll help you with that ISPF. I, ISPF is, is the major tool we're using. Um, we're going to be using the character encoding summary chart in this challenge. Uh, so um, bring that up and just kind of leave it, leave it out. And um, we already had it out. So um, let me go back to this uh, part two, challenge seven. Okay. So this challenge is, is, is about um, character encoding. And though it's not really complicated, um, and none of these challenges to date have been like really complicated challenges, um, it will take you some time to um, get through it in terms of it's somewhat tedious, but um, the tedium I think is worth it because it really um, solidifies your understanding of the hexadecimal number scheme. Again, hexadecimal is what we use as shorthand for binary, right? Um, the processor speaks binary, ones and zeros. And so what hexadecimal allows you to do is um, group um, four bits, four binary digits, and um, that's what a bit stands for, binary digit, but four bits into one character, one hexadecimal character. And We'll talk about the, the math about that a little bit later. It's not that complicated in terms of the conversion from binary to hexadecimal, but hexadecimal is, I call it shorthand for binary. Right? Um, and so this exercise will very much solidify understanding of um, hexadecimal, um, EBCDIC, ASCII, and uh, to a degree, PAC decimal. A pack decimal is an advanced topic, but essentially it allows you to put, uh, instead of using a byte, instead of using eight bits to uh, represent a number, it allows you to use four bits. So in a byte, you can put actually two, two numbers, okay, two numbers in one byte. Uh, it's called pack decimal. And so um, here we'll, we'll exercise that. Now, <clears throat> Um, read the background as always. Right? Background is great, but I'm not going to take time on the video to um, go through the background with you because you can do that on your own. Uh, I'm going to skip to the challenge um, for the sake of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to bring up a file. I'm going to show you the file that we're going to bring up in a minute. Now, this this uh, they have here this. Uh, uh, challenge preparation, right? So go through the challenge preparation, um, and it, it really helps you uh, get a feel for kind of the environment we're going to work in. For example, uh, using the source ASCII command, um, and I'll demonstrate that um, um, in, in a moment, um, and the reset command, and it just showed you a little bit about the environment. 
So these little um, at signs that you see here, they're there because when you say source ASCII, the value for of the ASCII space is 2O, right? The, the decimal number 20. Um, but that decimal 20 is the binary representation of the at sign, the epsilon. So when you go from, when you say source ASCII, you said, okay, don't render the char characters using uh, the EPSIDIC uh, character, um, character scheme, um, which is the default in the mainframe. It says use ASCII, which is what we, which is what the PC uses and what you use, right? We're more familiar with that. So we'll demonstrate all of that momentarily. Um, so when we get down to the challenge part of it, um, You made the challenge yet? Yeah, there it is. Um, so we're going to take a file and we're going to take the, the data code file. File and member are synonymous. We're going to take the data code file and we're just going to do some conversions on it. Right? Um, and you need to do the, the uh, preparation for the challenge to get to this point. Now, what I've done is because the solution is somewhat time consuming and, um, and you know, I'm going to submit my part to completion to get my my um, metal my, my merit badge just like you guys are uh, so I, I don't want to have to go redo it so I, I've got on another machine I got on the Maris machine and I can show you some things about the data code um, data set now mine is called uh, I, I call it MTM7 but this is this is your um, what data set is it in that's in the P2 out no it's in um where is that located? It's located in um, PDS data. Data code, that's the one we're going to use. And I can bring mine up because the solution is not going to be showing on the screen, so I'll, I won't show you the solution to it. Um, that is the final file, right? And so when I say source ASCII, you'll see that um, line nine, you have to perform this on line nine. So the first four spaces, space one through column one through four, you're gonna have to, to make it pack decimal, okay? And you, you should be very proud of yourself when you complete this because this is, this is not, this is non-trivial stuff that you're doing. Um, it's gonna be um, pack decimal. And then um, lines four through 82, four through 80 rather, are going to be ASCII. So I have the ASCII representation of all these. Now the default is the default is EPSIDIC. And you've got to put the, the ASCII representation in there. So I'm going to show you how to do it with this other file. And it's not really complicated, but you know, it's not really intuitive. There's nothing, well, there's nothing really intuitive about a mainframe. Mainframe is not like a Mac. Mac is a very intuitive machine. Uh, I have a Mac, it's not working now, so I have to buy another one. I, Spill some liquid in the, on the keyboard, and I can't get them. They said they couldn't fix it. Um, anyway, we we'll, won't we'll take up time with that. But um, the Mac is intuitive, right? But a um, mainframe not intuitive. Mainframe is based on logic. Um, the Mac is built based on human factors, what humans need. Um, mainframe is built on, you know, what does the engineering and math say as to how this thing should work? Um, so it's based on engineering and mathematics principles. And that's why it's so effective. But that makes it not intuitive either. Um, but it is a manageable beast. As I hope you're seeing. If you've gotten this far, um, no reason for you not to go all the way to the end of um, um, number two. So part of what we're going to do is um, this is the original file. I think this is the original file. Yeah, this is the file before it's converted, right? And so you notice here, this at sign here is four zero. See the ASCII representation of that. And so you're going to make some changes. Now, I'm going to help you out here, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you a solution because um, you know, IBM would be real upset if I did too much of this for you guys because it wouldn't be fair um, um, to just give the answers away. But I um, do need to guide you because you're not familiar with this technology. So we're going to go to the reference. And one of the things you're going to use to help you um, solve this challenge is the character encoding summary. So here you've got the character encoding. Now, 
Um, pay attention to um, um, these characters here. So these are uh, the English characters, lowercase, uppercase, um, et cetera, and these some special characters down here. Note, make note of this space. The space is going to be very important. The four zero is the um, decimal representation for a space in Epsotic. Two zero is the decimal representation for a space in ASCII. And so if you look at this file here, you see we have a space here, right? Um, I mean, we have a four zero here. So that's the ASCII character for um, a space. Now, I can, I can kind of corrupt this file because it's, it's a copy of the one I have on the, um, on the, uh, on the site. So I'm going to change that from a, and mine's on the bottom, so it's a little confusing to you. Uh, I forget how to change it quickly, so I'm just going to, I'm not going to take up time to, to, to move my command line to the top, but this is where most people use it. I like mine on the bottom for whatever reason, but, um, you know, but, but it's still the command line. So I'm going to put save here, and every time I save this, it's going to save what I, wh whatever change I made. And so I want you to pay attention to this line, right, this space right here. Uh, what column is this? This is column. Um, this is column 31. Okay. It's column 31. And when I hit save, that's going to become a space. Right, see? And I go back to 4-0 and I do save. And then you're going to see that the, the hat sign again. Save. So I, I just this is the heck no, this is not the de I said decimal. Um, you know, let me go back. Let me go back. I want to I want to make sure that I'm I'm saying this correctly because I don't want you to be confused because uh, this stuff is new to you. These are the hexadecimal representation. Every number up here is hexadecimal. So hexadecimal goes from zero through F A B C D F right. 15 characters, well, actually 16 if you count zero. And um, it, it's called base 16, whereas um, um, binary is called base two, base 16. And it just works out that, you know, grouping them in, um, there's nothing, you know, special about base 16 other than it allows you to group characters, um, binary characters in groups of four to represent. So one symbol can represent four uh, binary digits. And so um, zero through nine is, is, is equivalent to uh, what's in, in um, what's in um, decimal, um, um, decimal nine and, um, and uh, hex nine are the same value. But the, then you need something for um, binary 11 is, binary 11 is, no, binary 10 is eight. Binary 11 is B. Binary 12 is C. Binary 13 is D. Binary 14 is E. Binary 15 is F. Right. So that that is the those are the, the hexadecimal um, values. And so these are where I said decimal before I was wrong. These are the um, hexadecimal representations of these characters. Um, hexadecimal. So going back here, um, hex four zero is the value for the at sign um, in hex, but in ASCII it's a blank, right? So I say save, and then it comes a blank. Now keep that in mind. Uh, let's go back to the chart. Um, I will 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 bring your attention to this. This um, explanation of pack decimal. Again, what it is is there are eight bits to a byte, right? And so usually a byte is one character, either a letter or a number. That, that's what what usually is the case. Um, however, like the number one um, in, in the in the non-pack decimal world, number one that's a byte. The letter A that's a byte. Okay, um, but because 
because mainframes are designed to be very, very efficient. There's a way, and, and, and by efficient, I say, I say every bit is important. Every clock cycle of the processor, processors run with a ticking clock, and that clock ticks and an instruction is um, um, processed. Now, the, the processor runs very fast, so it runs, I think, now, mainframe processors run like five billion um, clock ticks a second, you know, five and a half billion, something like that. Uh, so that's five billion times in a second that a, 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 a transaction can be processed. Um, each one of those clock ticks is valuable. Each bit of storage is valuable. So many, many years ago, mainframes came up with a scheme to pack decimal numbers, pack decimal numbers in um, in the memory location. So you can put, instead of having, with pack decimal, instead of having one number for eight bytes, you can have two numbers for eight bytes. Um, and other than that, you know, beyond that, it gets a little complicated. And then what they call the last low order bit right here, um, the last of, of the number that you're trying to represent in this case, it's um, 1, 123,456,789 positive, right? That's a positive number. Um, and so you see it's here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Here. Same here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I, I've got, instead of here, instead of having one number here um, in these two bytes, I have two numbers. But I have to say whether it's negative or positive. So the, the last um, the last bit that I use, I put a, a hex character there to say what it, what it's going to be, right? So that is what you need to do to solve the, the, the problem, uh, right? Cause, because what you've got to do is you've got to, the first four, um, what did I do here? Oh. I'm sorry, I didn't need to, I, I, yeah, I'm losing track of, of everything. So to solve this equation, you have to do a couple of simple things, but they're not, um, they can, they're gonna be time consuming, but they're, they're pretty straightforward. So you're gonna change uh, where it says right here, 432. Let's go back to res. Do I have the same file? I don't. Well, let me look at. I thought that I. Yeah, I thought that I had it in this original form, but I guess I don't. Um, I guess I don't. Um, hmm. let me see if maybe, yeah, yeah maybe, because I don't want to reset it, because, um, um, well, I should, yeah, I probably can reset it, I think I can, I know what I can do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the one that I have read access to because I don't want to change mine. I, I don't want to change mine, but I want you to see it in its original form. Uh, so let's go to DOS MTM 2017. And uh, do I have to put my, yeah, the data set name is so I have to put. Um, a single quote to start it with because it's not my data set. Quote, quote. Hmm. In 2017. Um. Let's 
so it's late. I've had a long, I've had a very long day, people. I'm sure some of you had very long days too. So, but this is it's one o'clock in the morning where I am. I don't know what time you're looking at this. Uh, I forget where where my my stuff was. US MTM 17 public PDS data. Uh, yeah, that should have should have worked. I don't know why it didn't work. Go back to it and see. I'm working on two different mainframes. Uh, so prefix data set thing, man. Okay, that's why it worked. Uh, public data. And I'm gonna go here. Public PDS data, public PDS data, public PDS data, data code. Okay. Let's see if we can see what that looks like. Okay, that's why I didn't look at that. That's the wrong one. Public. PDS data, this is what I want here. Yeah, okay, so I'll bring this one up. Now I can't I can't edit this one because I've got read only access to it. And right here where you see that um this is four three two. So those first four lines, uh first four columns rather, column one through four, you're gonna have to make that pack decimal, right? Uh using um you put X um HX there for hex and you have your hexadecimal values. But you have to change these, these first four columns, you have to change those uh, to a packet decimal format using um, this information in here. Right? So yeah, that's what you have to do. Now, you have to give that some thought and let you think about that, right? Let you think about that. Wrestle with it, right? You can do it. Um, but um, then after you do that, all you have to do is go here and change these characters, right? I'll do a couple of them for you, but I'm not gonna do all of them just so you get a feel of, of what it does. So you go to see where it's supposed to be a um, an A, for example, right? And let me change mine. Let me this, what, what, what is it saying? Source ASCII, show it in ASCII. Right, so here, right? You got the first four that you do in pack decimal, and this is not the solution, so I'm not I'm not telling you tales out of school, but I'll do the first one. So you look at capital P, and it's 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 uh, vertical. The numbers are in vertical form, um, or they're vertically organized. So I look at P. So what is P in the in the um, scheme? So I go to my uppercase characters. I look at P. And I find out what it is. It's five zero, right? Five zero. And so put five zero here. It's already there, right? Um, oh, this is the source ASCII. So let's, let's reset this. So going. Um, oh, and your file is going to be in, yeah, your file is going to be um, in hexadecimal. So you just put the characters there. Those are the characters, but uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna leave it up. So, you know, um, I don't wanna give you a solution. Um, and note wherever you have a space, you have to have two zero for ASCII. Where this is four zero, you have to have two zero. So um, yeah, this isn't this is in um, Epsidic. This is an Epsidic. Uh, what's going on with that? Um, I'm curious.
yeah, I don't know why that's where it's supposed to be. But um, anyway, that's what you do. And then the spaces, um, you just, you know, you just use the character, the appropriate, um, ask the character for the space. And you do it vertically, and that's it. It's going to take you some time, but be careful. Every time you hit save, it's going to change um, the value to what you have. So, for example, if you have a space here uh, and you change this to 4 0, and you hit save, then it's going to put the character there. And that's it. Okay? Um, that is the solution. Now, after you've got your file the way you want it, um, and you can, what it does is it, it will let you can do this to test it. TSO space A to E uh, after you save your changes, and it will validate. And, and so on line nine, there should be uh, no at sign characters on line nine. Uh, once, you do, once you're satisfied that you've done it correctly, then you put this in the command line, uh, rep space P2 dot output in parentheses, uh, hash 07, close paren. And that's going to generate, oh, from, and, you know, make sure you put C99 because it's, that's what it says it's going to delete, uh, it's going to copy um, um, the, the, the first 999 rows of what you do. Um, if you don't have 999 rows, it's going to do however many you have. And it's going to copy what you have um, to this output in this member. And you're done, right? And then you will have a go back to the other system. You will have a um, my backup. D zero zero seven four five. Anything else? Uh, and that's the reason it said no data set names is because at the slash here, at the slash. I'm, I'm, I like when I mess up because when I when I mess up, you can see what I need to do co to correct it. Um, I'm going to do P2 out to put where where all of our solutions are, and then you'll have a number seven, and you'll have one, um, one through seven. That's it. Um, really enjoyed being online with you guys earlier this evening, the the lead IT um, lecture, and uh, we're moving right along. Right along. I mean, you guys have some some wonderful careers. Uh, ahead of you. So stick with it. And on the chapter on the challenge eight.